the five pillars that guarantees success in our current world. What should not miss is the word current world. You know the Bible addresses current issues. You remember the Apostle Paul said, the Apostle Paul said, because of the current crisis, I recommend. So there are recommendations that are made by the Holy Spirit based on the current situation. One thing God knows is that we live in this world. And this world continues to change as times change. And the Bible says also that in this time, we have come more closer to our salvation than when we started. Meaning, God recognizes that there is past, present, and future. That's what the Bible says, that I, give, I, I have good plans for you. Plans to give you a future that you hope for. So God knows your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. And that's why you should have more confidence in that kind of God. He takes care of your past. He takes care of your present. And he takes care of your future. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God everyone. Hallelujah. The question we need to answer as believers now we live in this century. Now, in the 21st century, the same God who has been making sense from the very first century, can he still make sense now? Yes. Because he understands the times. For he is behind the change of times. Praise God. He has been there. He is and they will always be there. For those believers who live in the 21st century, what are the things that guarantee your success? Number one, and it should always be number one for every believer, anointing. Number one is the anointing. This is the divine empowerment or the divine ability that enables a person to do good and to enjoy good earthy. The Bible says in Acts 10 verse 38, And how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth that he went everywhere doing good and healing all those who had sicknesses. So number one is anointing. Everyone say anointing. anointing. You require anointing. Every believer, regardless of your denomination, Regardless of your church, whether you come from a formation, a religious formation, or a Pentecostal, or evangelical, whichever background, you must labor to understand anointing. For in the absence of anointing, the devil takes advantage of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that the same message I'm giving you is also for ministers of the gospel. Because whatever makes ministers of the gospel successful can never miss to make their spiritual children successful. If your father is successful, you imitate him. The apostle Paul tells Timothy, you can imitate me because I equally imitate Christ. There must be a mentor that you imitate. And your spiritual father should be your mentor number one. Therefore, if your man of God becomes successful, definitely you too become successful. Hallelujah. And I am successful. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 This is the secret behind any 
anything you may consider a success in my life. Amen. How many of you want to be successful? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The number two, what you require after the anointing, you require skill. Everyone say it again. Skill. The ability to know and do something. Skill is very important. God never calls anybody that is not skilled or skillful. Because much of his assignments require some know-how, some knowledge. Moses had a skill. He was given instructions on how to, to measure and build a tabernacle for God. And he never missed the point. If he was told it's 50 by 100, he could not do 60. Noah was told to build an ark. He had a skill. Paul was a tent maker. The disciples were fishermen. Everybody had a skill. Elisha was a farmer. Nehemiah, go and build the wall of Jerusalem. You must have a skill. And shout it again, skill. If you are seated here this morning and you are expecting a miracle which does not involve some skill, you are mistaken. When we talk about the bull of Bethesda, it never dug itself. It was built by men. An angel was supposed to come, but there is no angel that dug the bull of Bethesda. It was built by people. The water was directed by people. But the angel was supposed to stir. The water already availed by humans. Every human being must know to do something. Every human being. You can shout it again louder. Skill. Skill. You must be involved in doing something. You must. When God created Adam and Eve, he did not begin by giving them anointing. Because they were his product, they already came anointed. He gave them a single assignment to till the garden of Eden. That means assignment number one for everyone must be skilled. No wonder the Bible says God will bless the work of your hands. God never blesses any work of your heart. Say hands. If you have two hands, lift them up and clap for Jesus. <laughs> Clapping is a skill. Because you are making music. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everyone works. Everyone works. And in this church, everyone must, not should, but must work. There is no skill. Begging is not a skill. You know there are people who say, I am very good in begging. Begging is not a skill. It's a mentality. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three that you require is character. Because no matter how anointed you are, no matter how skilled you are, character can bring down everything you have built for a long time in a minute. You require character. What is the work of character? Or what they refer as integrity? What is the work of character? The work of character is to help protect and maintain and the cost durability to whatever investment you have made. It is character that protects everything that we do. You can be a great investor. 
but with in the absence of character or good morals whatever your bill will come down in a minute samson defended israel against the philistines he was the strongest man ever recorded in the bible physically strong there's no other man in the bible that could could handle and wrestle a lion except samson even daniel never dared it is the angels that protected him but even to samson Every lion could be dead by morning. He was such a powerful man. Powerful. But when it came to the area of character, it messed him up. His appetite and the desire was beyond the anointing deposited in his life. Sometimes when you are anointed, mind about the anointing. No matter how the desire might be. For the sake of the anointing and for the sake of the assignment. Cool down and calm down the desire. The appetite for anything. It can be appetite for sex. It can be appetite for food. It can be appetite for other things. I mean excess of ordinary desire. It's what we call appetite. It is so much. Everyone can be. Everyone eats food. But there are people whose appetite goes beyond the rest. Meaning it has gone higher than ordinary. You must control everything in your life. Control everything in your life. Child of God. Are we connected? Yes. Tell your neighbor control it. It can spoil it. Anything that you desire and control can spoil any investment, any time. Number four. Everyone requires hard work. Everyone must be hard working. There is no character in your Bible that is documented for our emulation in that never worked hard. Every character in your Bible. Have you ever noticed that the Bible speaks that we should not be lazy? What is the opposite of laziness? Then shout it. Shout it like you mean it. Do you know the Bible says anybody that oversleeps will become poor? Yes. The Bible does not say that we should not sleep. It says anybody that loves sleep. There are people who sleep during day and during night. That's why many of you can't qualify to be drivers and God cannot risk your life by giving you a car. Because you can't drive while sleeping. God is not, God is not ready to risk you are alive. Some of you, it doesn't matter where you are. Whether you are praying, you are sleeping. Whether you are fasting, you are sleeping. Whether you are eating, you are sleeping. You know, there are people who are, who are working up, please. You know, you have nothing that you can finish without sleeping. Tell your neighbor, don't love sleep. On the contrary, be a hard worker. There is nobody who works hard and is never rewarded. There can be a position that is demonic. The devil can try, but the devil has never succeeded 100% in a man that works hard. Even if you don't know Jesus, even if you are a Muslim or you are a an Hindu and you are working hard, the devil does not have capacity beyond hard workers. He doesn't have. You may not be prayerful, but you are hard working. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hard work. hard work. Hard work. What I'm talking about here, I mean, everyone should learn to work beyond the working time. That's overtime. Everyone should learn 
to work beyond the working time. Immediately you are out of your place of work. Begin working. That's the time you need to work. Praise God. Immediately, you are out of your place of work. Begin to work. Glory to God. Number five. Network. That's in the current world. Number five, say network. That's more current, and you might not see it clearly in your Bible, but network, very important. You need some kind of connection to arrive at your destiny. You need connection. The entire Israel could have been lost if Joseph was not in Egypt. There could not be any generation called Israel because Israel are the sons of Jacob. And a time came when all of them were going to die because of anger. There was no food. But Joseph was already in Egypt where there was food. He connected them to food. He connected them to fertile land. You require network. Some of you say, I don't care. As long as I'm connected to Christ, be connected to Christ, that's okay. But you must be connected to your fellow human beings. And that's why the Bible teaches about love. There are people you hate, yet they carry your destiny. We call them destiny helpers. And sometimes the devil makes you to look at them negatively, yet they carry your destiny. Everyone say network. We require network now. It is so biblical. It is so biblical. There is no human being that is an island. And there is no way you can arrive at your destiny alone. You require people. You require those who are ahead of you. You require serious people to be there. And this network I'm talking about. You must be connected to people who have what you want. No people who want what you have. Both ways is a network. You must be connected to people that have what you want with people that have what it takes for you to arrive. If you want to be an investor and you, are, you want to do real estate, maybe in Nairobi, why should you be connected to a person that is working very hard to be a, 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 a chicken rare? I mean, somebody is wanting to do poetry. If you want to do poetry, connect with those people who already have hands that are surviving. Hello? Yes. If you want to run a successful family, do you go seek advice from a man that has divorced three times? <laughs> if you want to know how to stop drinking, do you seek advice from a man that runs a crap? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are a teacher or a priest of a school, there is a school, maybe Nyambera Secondary School, that had a mean of maybe 2.3. And there is Nyambaria, which had a mean of 10.3. Where do you take your teachers for page marking? Nyambera. Why Nyambaria? They have what you want. You want to discover how did they have it. In other words, in this life, don't be deceived. Seek advice from those that have already succeeded. Don't say you would enter into prayer 
and God will show up miraculously. I really know he does miracles. But I can assure you that miracle he will not do. It's a miracle that's produced by observation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those five things will help you in your journey to succeed. But of all the five pillars of success, the most important of all of them is character. That's the most important. Anointing is important. Skills are important. Hard work is important. Network is important. But in the absence of character, whatever you are building will come down. It doesn't matter whether it's a big church, whether it's a big organization, whether it's a, a big talent. In the absence of character, it will come down. Character is a lot of things. As integrity is a lot of things. Those are a lot of things. In the absence of that, it will come down. Whether it's a strong family that you're built, or whether it's a strong business that you're built, you miss discipline, you miss character, you miss honesty, it will come down. However anointed you are, 